Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Bald and the Beautiful podcast. My name is Melissa. My name is Kevin. Hello. Hi, I'm Angel. Thanks, Leal, up in the building. Okay, and um, okay, so listen, this is what's going on. I have decided to revamp the way that I'm doing the Bald and the Beautiful from now until closing time. Yes. I, that might closing be an announcement. Time. Yeah, we should announce. Okay, okay. that might be an announcement. Right now? Yeah, go for it. We, we, we're not doing this no more. Hello? Hello? You're not going to ease into it I'm or a, nothing. Uh, Kevin in. ain't wanted to do this since the second show. So <laughs> and y'all can blame real. me. Josh, single me out. <laughs> it's me. It's me. It's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Standing in the need of a I've been campaigning for many months to not do this show no more. I love Marcus Angel and Melissa, Alyssa the most. But I don't want to. He said no I don't want to watch crap ahead of time. Me and Melissa trying to find time to watch stuff is hard. It's too much. Me and Angel shoot twice a week. You can't bulk shoot the bald and the beautiful. We had a good laugh. We had a good time. Married at first sight, this is really your fault. If y'all would have good shows and didn't piss us off, you'd probably still be doing it. But after June, it's over with. It's more Direct like all May. your complaints to after this May. don't care at kevonstage.com. <laughs> Hello. And somebody will get back to you promptly. I hope you guys enjoyed your time. All things must come to an end. Um... But we're going until June. After June, we're going to have a birthday party and some pizza with no pork because Marcus Angel don't eat it. What y'all be getting when y'all order pizza? Cheese? Everything else. Vegetables. Chicken? Ve- chicken. First of all, veggie pizza is fire as hell. I love it. I don't mind it. Uh, so, wait a minute. Is it May or June? I, w- I was when saying was May then? because uh, I just I forget, <laughs> though. Every time we talk about it, it moves up. It's, <laughs> it's, Today it's is the, the last show. show. <laughs> first, it was like after this year. It, then was, it was July, June. then it's June. It was May. June, but because I Next normally week. take off July. <laughs> Oh, they didn't tell you, Joshy. They called we, us. Next week is the last show. <laughs> no, right. but go ahead, but listen. Hold on, Somebody Josh. text. Hold on. No, no, it was a text. Us. No, Kevin called. We uh, were figuring out Josh, stuff I'm with the tour. The know, so. Okay, it's sorry, not. Josh. I, I thought figured Patreon knew and I didn't. Hold on, let me. I'm trying to see when I stopped the ad. Hello. When I stop the ads, because um, I normally do July. Nope, I'm lying. So, okay. So, the week of the 17th in June will be the last week that we do this. And then that go. following week is the anniversary. July, we normally take off. And then, but we just won't be back. We in won't August. be back. The bald and the beautiful. <laughs> the balds grew hair. I saw one thing. Can y'all do it been bad. It, it's it's <laughs> been, uh, what's it called? Not demolished. It's over with. Yeah. It's over. Kev called this me. Band. He was, I was so proud of him. He was like, Okay, guys. So we don't. I don't want to do the ball and the beautiful anymore. <laughs> I was like, we no, yeah, like this. Like, they was like, again, the really second episode. Kev was like, ah, 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 why are we no, here? No, we were Apparently so shocked. my feelings show even when I'm not prepared oh, for the show. Oh, really? We were so like, shocked me this. when we came back in January when Melissa was like, okay, so I have an idea for what we'll do next year. We were like, me and Marcus oh, she, <laughs> afterwards, she we were like, we doing it again? Okay, well, all right. We'll be right here. Uh, Kev, so Kev's body language will clearly say one thing as soon as you bring attention to it. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, you already said it. <laughs> Somebody said, can we explain? I, I, I'll try to explain it again. Oh, he already did. Kevin oh, are we? Are it. y'all getting that? I still ain't got no notification, child. Oh, I mm-hmm. don't want to do it. That's it. No is a complete sentence. That's what they told me. That is what they say, kid. But the real thing is, it's hard. You got to watch. Oh, I don't want to do no mukbang. I don't want to do it. And we, I need another day back. If we get this time, I have a whole another day back. I'd be here done with here's Kevin the day. Line. He gonna make up something to do. I was about to say. Kevin gonna fill this say. space in with something else. He already don't, did. Don't lie to him. Yeah, I was about to say. All I'll you had to say is that. All you gotta I'll say is I don't want to do it and put a period Gotham there because you ain't finna lie to me. Yeah, don't. He don't. It's <laughs> not that. I need the time back to do something. I don't want to do it. <laughs> he All don't right, want to do it. Leave it at that. No. <laughs> Somebody saw this on the internet. Hey, come on. Yeah. <laughs> Address all your complaints to me. Yeah, Kevin. Blame Kevin, me. Kevin no longer wanted to do it. I'm Batman running in the dark at the end of. <laughs> and also, but I will add, like we were having. I know last year we struggled to find like shows that we could like really sink our teeth into. We started up Sister Wives. We agreed. Melissa said, y'all not going to complain. And then the show, the season they, started. But then y'all. And Melissa complained. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It wasn't a good season. But uh, y'all saw Garrison committed to um, unalived himself. It. I heard about that. And I think y'all that should broke go my heart. Oh, one of the kids. One of the yes. kids. One of the kids. Wow, that's horrible. That's I, terrible. It, it broke. They put it in the docket, and man, I was like, "Man, that really yeah. broke my heart." Yeah, I, and he was a he was a 
He was one of my favorite kids. He made me laugh. Yeah, because he was the one being real buck at that table. Yeah. If y'all remember that scene. Um, but yeah, I really, they got to end that show, though. Oh, yeah, y'all. Ain't no reconsideration. Yeah, this is it. By the time oh. we told y'all, it's been so final. Yeah. yeah. I, I was wondering when we were going to make the announcement or if we were just like, y'all don't see this no more. <laughs> yeah. I was going to wait. I was going to wait. But I have decided to, y'all know I love a good segment. Uh, we have segments on gin and juice. So I have decided to implement segments because part of it is that some of these shows don't give you a lot of um, things to, talk, to about. talk about. Yeah. yeah. And so that makes it really difficult to get through um, an hour. Mm -hmm. And I want to be appreciative and grateful to our sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> and give them the time that they've paid yes. for. Yes. And, you know, we can't be crawling because, child, we be barrel crawling our way. To that hour. To that hour. For the top. I mean, y'all know we be talking about other stuff and not the yeah. shows. And if we were to continue, I would literally have to break into Kevin and Melissa's house while they're asleep and delete their Tubi app. <laughs> oh, because we did fight, uh, but this one's a good one. I oh, am I, I, I would catch me and I would not care. What oh. you doing? Deleting y'all shit. <laughs> Listen. Now I'm, take, now I'm taking the remote. This is a good one. This we, is so a good the one. funny thing about it, me and Melissa watched Shogun to see if we could re review that. It was recommended in the good? book club that it's doesn't exist. It's an amazing show, I see that. but it's not a reviewable it's show. It's not a reviewable yeah. show. It is very, it's Game of Thrones season one. It's a political drama, very... Uh, chess pieces. Get my hand up in there. Yeah. Thank you. There you go. Mm, uh, and it's I don't I can't imagine us finding a lot of humor in it because it ain't yeah. or even like reviewing it. But we was like we watched two episodes of that and we was like this is good but this ain't TBTB. Yeah. When we turned on pressure, I said nah. Now we done hit a home run. The only thing it was terrible because it was only three episodes the whole season because they was, shot it also in three days. It was the when <laughs> we listened to your voice note of hey Angel and Marcus actually if you all could binge watch the whole season it's only three, <laughs> three episodes, episodes. <laughs> I hollered. <laughs> And they're only 30 minutes as yes. well. Yes. You can we finish the whole there. thing in a, in a Shannon Sharp podcast. We saying, oh, yes, my queen yes. was over. We were sitting there and Angel was listening. She just bust out laughing. I was like, what? She was like, you ain't heard that note. I said, we are not watching whatever we thought we were about to watch. We're all watching pressure. Marquita sat there and watched this show like this oh. the entire time. <laughs> Marquita was yeah. Marquita was so She's mad. She's in production. She yes. was so mad. She was like, what is this? And then by the end of the set, first episode, I said, but you want to keep watching. That's, she said, I got to see what this horrible crap is. That's what Plush Productions' best quality is. It Lisa don't Brown. matter. You got to finish it. And Lisa Brown made a camera. Wait, wait, wait. Let's not. Wait, wait, wait. I oh, need the other 15. Let me go in the other order. Uh -oh. Okay. Uh -huh. So we're going to start from now until the end. Okay. All right. Okay. Tell us. Uh, we're going to start with a segment I'm calling Last Week Today. And we're going to talk about things that were noteworthy from the week. All right, so mm -hmm. that's our first segment. We'll start with, um, actually, we should start with Angel. You're the only one truly with a noteworthy mm -hmm. week. Oh, yeah, the week was great. Me and Marcus said the week felt like a month because so many like things happened mm -hmm. in last week. My I was like, goodness. I said, Marcus, you know we did the golf invitational this week. He said, what? I feel like it was three weeks ago. For people to be on tour, oh my God, Josh. traveling three days a week, three, four days a week, the one week to be home to feel more exhausting than traveling across the country. Oh, man. What you said? Something was, I said, well, we might as well be on tour if we're going to do all this here. Listen, it was so much, <laughs> but it was a, uh, it, a the week turned out uh, almost perfect. Uh, the Obviously, here's the thing. One, for outstanding podcast for um, what we do, art, sports, and entertainment. Um, a Black Lady Sketch Show, one for outstanding variety show. Is this going to cause an argument? We weren't able to pull it off. <laughs> oh, uh -huh. Talk about it so bad. But we can't. And then. Uh, oh. And then. Oh. Oh. Oh, I want to talk about it so bad. But we can't. And stop. I got to tell y'all something about that as well. Oh, we should have did that before we. But make. <laughs> <laughs> and then. I, no, I'm just <laughs> I had the uh, pleasure of in the honor of being crowned. 2024 social media personality of the year. Beep, 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 beep. It was so great. It was a, a bunch of full circle moments. Um, one, Unruly Cousin Kevin was able to give me the award and announce. Two, it was very, um, it, uh, the vision boards we did as the first episode mm -hmm. here on The Bald and the Beautiful. We'll do that again in June. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do a six month check in, see if any of the things that we said have come to pass. That'll be great. Um, <laughs> the thing I wanted to hear. Nice to your business. Quite literally was said out of Kevin's mouth. That's crazy because I didn't even think about that video. Mm -hmm. 
That's just what you say. That's what I said. And I had no nominations for nothing. When mm-hmm. you when you put that on the vision board. Correct. I think I said I think the, I said the winner of the award is. I wish I would have remembered I would have said it exact. Mm-hmm. It was close enough. Mm-hmm. It gave me the same feeling that I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was great. I got to wear pretty outfits. Me and Marcus had a blast. My husband mm-hmm. will look phenomenal. Shout out to Shaq, who is his new mm-hmm. stylist. And I was my own stylist with the Wait, um, Shaq Shaq? Yeah. Yeah, Shaq says She's a stylist? Yeah. Wait, social uh she does social media for yeah. I didn't know she was. Well, I don't know why I would everything. know that. You just got to anyway, know how to throw it together. That blue suit you had. Yeah. It was great. The blue I suit was from Express that I've got him for Christmas. And then oh, she just I love a good accessory. I love she, a good accessory. You look great. She basically just dipped into my closet and was like, wear this, this, and this. Then and when, when stylists come shop in your closet, it kind of pissed you off. Like, why I couldn't put my I own clothes together that. like that? I would have never I thrown that stuff together. I I have a, I got a compliment on TV yesterday. And I remember, I might have said on this podcast. Yeah, on KTLA. Shout out to your boy. You feel me? Uh, I said I want to be taken more seriously, so when I go there, so we, you know, have a stylist and stuff, and then Melissa was like, if you pay attention, you could see the way stylists dress you. Mm-hmm. You, could, you can build those. It's a up, formula. Uh-huh. A formula. Yeah, I'm shocked you got on a white shirt today. I know. It's just because I... I looks what? good on you, kid. <laughs> it's nice to see a little bit of color. It looks so gloomy all the time. Gloomy, because he in black all yeah. lot. I love me some sweats and a graphic tee. But anyway... Um, <laughs> When they be come into your room and put the stuff together, the stuff you already had, mm-hmm. and you'd be like, well, I didn't, why my you eyes don't go and look huh. at it like that? <laughs> it's like when your grandma go in. I remember my grandma, man. She'd be, be like, ain't nothing to eat in here. She'd be like, y'all know how to cook that. She'll a can of this. this I guess. And then you'd be like, yeah, how you made that out of yes. this? Yes. Whole yes. gourmet meal with stuff we had. I didn't even know we had that. Yeah. Cans, mm-hmm. canned food, frozen nah, vegetables. Thank, thankfully for Shaq, because we was walking around. She started with the shoes. Mm-hmm. She was like, we're going to go find shoes. What's the Nordstrom? With nothing in there, cause a black shoe, just a black shoe, brown shoe, just a brown shoe. Yep. Went to Neiman Marcus, saw these dope ass loafers. I was like, oh, I'm about to get these easy, so I don't care what them, what it costs. <laughs> of course, they, of course, the only pair in the country is in Arizona. We wasn't gonna get it in time. We walk in Aldo, he can fit. Mm-hmm. the identical shoe for a quarter of the price. That's Aldo bread and butter. Literally the same exact Aldo. shoe. Only difference is that Aldo on the bottom. Aldo's whole business model is you saw that over there, but you ain't got to spend it like that. A lot of bread. Of bread. <laughs> the amount of bread I was about to spend on it, I was like, oh, hell, oh, I'm getting this. Run it. Arizona, God dang it. Go Aldo was like, come over and spend your little $100. Aldo says, I'll do you a favor. Yeah. No, <laughs> correct. A lot of brand Gosh, is they just do designer brands. Steve Madden, as much of a hard time as we give like Fashion Nova, the reality is Steve Madden dupes designer. His whole Why line not? of shoes Why is not? a dupe. Uh, I didn't know that. Aldo. All, yes. Aldo. I'm like, uh, most of the places we all shop at are fast fashion, to be honest. Yes. I be one a designer, Aldo. I don't want to spend that kind of money. Hey. hey. I got That's these, good. I call them my caviar loafers. They got black diamonds on loafers. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember seeing they Steve Madden. Steve, Steve know what he's doing. I love a good Steve Madden shoe. Don't shoe. do me. Like, no. Listen, I love Jessica. I seen Simpson. this meme one Steve. time. Yes. Uh, this meme one time, and it was just a whole bunch of shoes, and it was the it, it was like, I mean, is a regular shoe with a whole bunch of different logos on it. Mm-hmm. And the point was, stuff be the same, but if I have a Nike logo on it, absolutely, you'd be oh, like, yeah. oh, it look cool. When 100%. you take the Nike logo off and put off put a sketch on else, it, put, put a, a sketch on it, you're like, ugh. Because mm-hmm. we be loyal to the brands without knowing, because that dog on good branding, it gets in your mind. Yeah. 100%. And, and cars, too. I seen it for cars. It was like the little Maserati, uh, Maserati, that truck I had, 18 other companies and make that exact car. Yeah. You know what it is? There's not a lot of car designers. They all no. hire the same dude. He exactly. took the Bentley, and they literally he uh, who was it? Kia hired him. Yep. Or or one of them companies hired him. He literally just took the design he did. He flipped the one thing, took the B <laughs> off, and it's, it's literally all the same identical lines. It's the same dude design both. And they like, oh, they copy. No, they just hired the same. Right. I get the you pay for a logo a lot. In a Mars shoes, right on off of Amazon. I'll be like, get on those Sasachi Nakis. <laughs> 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 That'll fit your shoes. Your foot that's just right. Sasachi Nakis. You know, I feel amazing when I have a fresh pedicure and manicure. It's so great. And sometimes I like being at home and not at the salon because I get to be around my babies. And this is why we are so grateful to Olive in June. Olive in June is everything you need for salon quality manicure in one box. Salon grade tools designed just for DIY. 
You can customize it with your choice of six polishes. And this polish doesn't doesn't chip. It lasts seven days or more. It breaks down to just two dollars a manicure. Actually, my good friend Denora swears by Olive and June, honey. And she'll call me and show me her nails. And I'll be like, oh, you went to the salon? She said, oh, I just did it here. I did it here while I was watching a podcast called The Bald and the Beautiful. <laughs> what? Um, it's really easy. And that's uh, to do it at home because of how they are able to um, create and design everything for DIY. Because, you know, back in the day when we were trying to do our own nails and stuff, it was just like you could tell when somebody was right-handed because their left hand would look amazing and their right hand would look like, what would happen? Who fight did you get into? Um, and what I love about it is that it is salon quality. Like they're giving you the nail polish that, like that a professional would use but you're getting to use it at home and you're able to maintain it better you don't have to worry about missing any appointments or traveling and you're able to style your own nails because they also have pressies where you could just <laughs> pop on an already designed nail um and it's great because like this episode where we're about to be talking about applying pressure you can apply pressure with some fierce nails and love to be able to stand out for all the right reasons um the press-ons uh the the olive and dream press-ons they look real they last long they have so many sizes you got a big thumb like me they got those for your thumbs right you'll find the perfect fit uh fit non-damaging able to get it done in less than 10 minutes it's better than gel allure magazine gave it the best of beauty winner it's only about ten dollars a set, and it's easy to remove. Legit can be removed with warm water, and you can change them out as many as you as as many times as you want. Or leave them on for weeks, or you can even paint them and take the polish off and end up with an, another fresh, perfect mani. Um, also, uh, as far as in their quick dry polish, dries in about a minute, lasts for five days, full coverage. And one to two coats, and they offer 40 plus cruelty free and vegan polishes. Visit oliveandjune.com slash TBTB TBTB for 20% off your first system. That's O L I V E A N D J U N E dot com slash TBTB TBTB for 20% off your first system. And we thank them for sponsoring today's podcast. Very good, very good. Anyone else on last week today? Anything noteworthy happened in your week, Kev? Did we win the award last week? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We won on Tuesday. We were on TV yesterday. Yep. <laughs> Here's the thing. That week was a blur. We it won was, it. It was a fast week. When we, so I'm going to tell you about the NAACP. This, I didn't realize this until we were at the awards. When Fantasia was, it was her first win. Mm-hmm. And Damson Idris was, it was his first win. Mm-hmm. And it was our second win. I was like, this is, obviously it meant a lot to me. Already, mm-hmm. but realizing people like Fantasia who've been in the game since we were in college, I remember watching her, mm-hmm. uh, her getting her first win, it'd be like, whoo, yeah. these are tough to come by. Yeah. So having two is great because people that I look up to, a lot of them don't have any. Some only have one. So I don't mean that disparagingly. I really mean like it's like winning a very prestigious award, and I'm very proud. I thought we all got one for Here's the Thing. But we get one. We get one. I tried to pick it up, but they didn't have our place. I was going to bring it today. They didn't have our little mat thing to mm. put to the trophy. They had them at Can the we after make party. Our own? It's not quite the same. You should just let her pick up the one. And you could. Do we just see it? See it, see it in the I'm office. gonna take it down to the middle of the mall. <laughs> <laughs> Give me another one just like this. Like this. <laughs> this season, you can hang up the certificate. <laughs> I could do it. You get. You get. The I got a certificate. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's yeah. cool. But uh, that was my week. That was very. I was very happy about that. Very good. Congratulations, um, Marcus. Uh, what was it? What was the question? Uh, anything notable? Oh, notable. Um, yeah, still nominated, of course. Angel won. Uh, I was telling, I think I was talking about it. Um, this is gonna cause an argument. After knowing what I know now, I feel good again about mm-hmm. just the nomination. But I remember, I think it was last year or something, where I was like, I understand where you coming from mm-hmm. of not wanting to celebrate. Yeah, because I'm like, let me celebrate at the end once everything mm-hmm. comes out, then I can go back. Right. And celebrate yeah. and be excited and yep. all that. But you can't do that with this type of nomination because you got a campaign and you got to do this right. and yes. that. You can't just sit back. But again, Angel asked me, would I want to do it again? I was like, no. <laughs> because I don't want to I don't want to enter into something where I have to be chosen. Yeah. Right. I, you know what I'm saying? I if I it. lose, I want to lose because I didn't do it. Not right. because 
somebody else didn't do 1, something. You know what I'm saying? That's why if I didn't win, um, I'd be like, don't put me up no more. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to say <laughs> nothing else about it. Mm-hmm. Um, but just being there and uh, hearing people that I don't know just come up in this type of environment, other people in our world and other um, industries and stuff just come up and recognize me and, you know, give their gratitude and me give it back. That was a little different. And then, uh, yeah, just the golf thing was dope. Yeah, Marcus had fun playing golf with Josh. Um, yeah, fun with me. Josh. That was a that was a good. I mean, it got pissed off. So I don't know what happened with the arm. That whole injury thing. Marcus but bounced back from playing that. Golf. Oh, I don't know how it happened. I don't know what it was. Forty two in it. But it's, it's called uh, that AGE. Is what I, I, I went. But <laughs> well, two days later, I was back in it. <laughs> I was golfing Ready? again. Yeah, me and Chance went. Um, Marcus is into the golf, even though he wanted to throw away his golf. I wanted to right sell all them clothes. <laughs> second hole, I was like, man, hell with this punk. Second ass hole. I was second so mad. Hole. <laughs> oh dang! That's part of the game, apparently. <laughs> That's hilarious. Second Josh hole, man, this like, is yeah. dumb. I'll break every one yeah. of these. <laughs> Third hole, man, the greatest game they ever created. It's, Tiger Woods, we play, baby. We the emotional roller coaster. Yes. <laughs> Fourth hole, you know what? The black shouldn't even be allowed on no. this. <laughs> you and your mama that designed this punk ass game. Fifth hole, you know what? Injected in my vein. <laughs> uh, uh, so that I don't know. We it was a long week. We was talking about uh, explaining how the week went. And when we were like 15 minutes in, we realized, y'all, this was just Tuesday. We yes. ain't got to Thursday. We ain't got to Saturday, Friday. And Melissa, the combination of daylight savings time, I'm still recovering. touring plus oh, this week, I, mm. I, I feel like I can't get enough we lost, sleep. We lost Monday. It was over. When you press, usually when I, on regular weeks, I press my alarm off. My alarm goes off at 5. Uh-huh. I turn it off. By 5.20, I'm up and ready to go to the gym. I did that today. I thought I pressed snooze. I like I get up and go. Pressed off. Closed my eyes for one second. Six thirty-seven. <laughs> yeah. That's how it happened. I barely touched the button. What That's time did the first alarm go? Five a.m. I said. <laughs> thought I pressed snooze. I think Apple switched. The, the snooze is small and it the is. off is big or whatever. Oh. oh. I pressed the wrong button. I said I'm gonna sleep for another hour and thirty-seven minutes. <laughs> then I go to the gym, try to hurt, rush and do some things. Then I just was like, I'm gonna leave it. <laughs> Oh my God! It's been Melissa. It. What's your week? Um, I had uh, it was just busy. It was just oh. busy. Uh, <laughs> getting the times confusing, confused on the NAACP just made Saturday. Oh, oh yeah, a they very went all the way day. to wine Did we say country. That on the we didn't say that on the podcast. Uh, we didn't say it on Jenna Juice. I said it on Jenna Juice. We live about two hours away from Joe's game, um, and so we ended up leaving. On Saturday at six thirty, mm-hmm. he had a game at eight thirty. Had to be there. At, no, that math might be wrong. Oh, no, right. no, his right. game was at ten thirty. I'm sorry. Uh-huh. Um, and then midway through, we realized actually Germany. If you listen, to Ginger, so I let y'all listen to the voice note. Text me and was like, "Hey, the red carpet's at two. I know you said your car's not picking you up till six. Like, what the deal?" And I was like, "Oh, you're right. What is the deal? <laughs> what is the deal?" Um, and so Kevin and I ended up leaving. We had to drive two hours back home get dressed, rush, do the things, get to the show. We were actually ended up being late and then went to the little after party for three and a half seconds because we left also that night to go back two and a, two hours to go oh, to Joe's geez. game. He had a game that next morning at 7, 8.30. He had to be there by 7.30. We had to be up by like 7 or so. We was just like get dressed and get out this uh, hotel. Did his game and then drove two hours back home. So it was just a long that sounds terrible. It was just long. The one thing that we had going for us is we knew we wasn't going to get on that red carpet. Oh. So we was like, let's just go right to the thing. Yeah, they, they didn't give I, us no credentials. And not going to embarrass me. Yeah. They told us to turn around. They said, you stay in the, make the car do a U-turn because you're not. And then just regular folk was on that carpet. I said, why y'all do? Yeah. I don't even want to go down that road. Why y'all do me like that? Why like y'all that? do me? Yeah, but that's okay. I said, I look good. I don't care. It was great. All right, moving on. Anything else noteworthy? Uh, last week today. All right, closing out. We're going on to guilty pleasure confessions. What did you indulge in last week? This could be something you did, something you watched, something you shouldn't have done, something you t- let too long. Okay, go. Because I, I see Marcus and Angel thinking. I'm going to okay. tell you what I did. Oh, all right, got mine. And I, okay, cool. I'm, I feel guilty about this. At my big age and also my entire life, I just be having a craving for certain stuff. No reason at all. I should be like, man, I want this. Sitting at home watching television with my wife. I said, I want a chili dog. Mm. Did I just get a chili dog? No. <laughs> I said, let me get a chili dog and a chili cheese fries. 
and a chili cheeseburger. <laughs> with, with you want a heartburn. <laughs> so I went to That's uh, a heartburn meal. Tommy's original, I think. I'm more concerned about the long term effects. The hell with the heartburn. <laughs> <laughs> I said chili cheese dog, click. Chili cheese fries, click. That's why you slept through your chili alarm. Ch- <laughs> chili <laughs> chilled you out. Yeah, your body was trying to shut down. <laughs> and the funny thing that wasn't is, sleep. I didn't even eat all of any of them, but I was like, you just wanted to taste bite. it. See, mm. Fries, you bite. better than me because if I order that, I'm gonna eat it. Okay. All, all of it. I, I didn't eat. I didn't eat all of any of it, but I, I was like, okay. I'm done. I gotta stop. Man, them fries was. <laughs> oh, it sounds good. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. Went downstairs, put it on the counter. I can't eat no more because it's all the way downstairs. Next thing you know, I just got to go downstairs. Make sure you got to throw it not. away if you don't want it. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I put it in the trash and I looked in and I said, oh, okay, "You now stupid." You're going too far. <laughs> <laughs> that was me uh, with the uh, molten lava. Uh, that's what I was gonna say. I've been craving the molten lava chocolate cakes. You know the type that you would put your food I was about in. to say the one from Domino's. No, mm. I was getting it from Joey, which we found out. It's Joey and not Joey's. With an S. I definitely thought it was apostrophe S we on there. We found out last night. We found out last night. Pull it up on night. Google. It has apostrophe S on it. I Maybe said, it's because I be Googling it that way. On the side, it says Joey. No. It says Joey. I said it literally. On the menu, it said Joey. <laughs> I definitely I thought it was Joey. It's last not, night when I ordered our dinner from there. Exactly. There's no S. Black people no put S. black people put an S. That's what we do. No, this is it's what Joey's. Is it? No, but I can effect. but I can see the sign. It's apostrophe S on the sign. No, it's not. no. It's, it's, it's your mind. next door to me. That sound like AEG, no, don't it? No, 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 no. It do, <laughs> but it don't say Woodland Hills. It says Joey's. Melissa, it says Joey. Look, she's like, I'm gonna keep saying, saying it. <laughs> it says Joey Restaurants. Said, yeah, yeah. When I tell you, no, I it's was called ordering, Joey's. I don't give a damn I have what they never say. Never said I definitely thought it was Joey's. Let me tell you, I was ordering food and I said, "Oh my God, Marcus!" He was like, "What?" I said, "We owe black people." And he was like, "What do you mean?" I said, "The restaurant is called Joey, not Joey's." He said, "No, it ain't." I said, "That's what I it's saying." DoorDash. I see the S on the desk. I see the S on the sign. I still see it, and I know what I'm looking at. I'm like, "That's gonna go out one day." <laughs> they gonna have to change that light up there. It's already out because it's, it's already. not up there. I didn't know that it was. Why it. did y'all blow my mind like that? Listen, I didn't know that. Guilty pleasure fig- made me figure it out. I ordered from there because I wanted a chocolate molten lava cake with bomb. ice cream. It tore up my little stomach, but it was worth it. That thing was so decadent. Kroger's. Oh. Well, we no, that has an S. It don't. No. Mm-hmm. My dad, I knew I was wrong when my daddy put an S at the end of Walmart. I was like, oh. that's the age I'm getting. Oh, Kroger. Kroger. Straws, don't we? It's Kroger? My, uh, it, it's Charles probably a skinny, though. Well, well his dad also calls it, well, used to make recipes, called it a thread meal. Oh, daddy would what just. What is that? A treadmill. He just fucking rolled it up for the hell of it. <laughs> he said, what is that? He, I knew, was it. he, he knew it would piss us off. He would just, yeah, I'm down, there, I'm down here on the thread meal. Stop saying that shit, daddy. That's hilarious. Daddy. I love how people from the South say daddy. Yeah, we D-E-H. flattened out that. Daddy. Mm-hmm. Well, what yes. I was about to say, we flattened. I ain't never called nobody daddy. So <laughs> I don't know why. Is Martin the King? That was, he was my father. She, <laughs> she never addressed him to him. He was <laughs> also dead. Daddy. He was also dead before I was born, but my father did pass away. Never called anyone daddy. daddy. No, I didn't put mine in there. I call him dad when I'm trying to make sure they know I'm talking to him and not Lil Marcus. I was like, Daddy. Anywho, anyway, anyhow, what's your guilty pledge? Uh, go for it. Marcus, you got one? Oh, that that uh, golf? Not the golf, the activity during the golf. I really, I don't smoke cigars that much. Oh. But when I do, I'm playing golf. <laughs> 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 now, um, usually I, I limit myself to how much I smoke, but I noticed every time I was out there on that course, I wanted to light me up a cigar. Wait, how many times and have I you did. gone golfing since the, since? Since the thing, I've only once or twice. Yeah, and before the thing, twice. Mm. Two, three times before. Oh, he's definitely picked up a habit. Mm. A, a, a hobby and a habit. It's that's an right. expensive one. They say the smaller the ball, the more expensive the, more the sport. Expensive. Not, yeah. That's what I thought. It was expensive. What you mean? Now, there are people that go to country clubs. This one dude, we found out he pays $10,000 a month for his country club. Yeah, a know. month? A month. Are but however, Josh, Josh can't get. Oh, could you put that in the refrigerator? Yeah, of course. There's, There's no straws. straws. Where are, I don't, Ten thousand. No, no, in the business over there. No, it's straws back here, ain't it? Ain't no straw back. 
Hold on, and let shit. me. Ain't no shot like that. Go but, ahead, talk, uh, talk, talk Anyway, about. I bought my clubs, which I pay way too much money for. I will admit that. Oh, clubs are expensive bag, too. You can get a bag and clubs for pretty reasonable. I got you some for five dollars. You got rid of. At a yard sale, there was left hand, right hand, and they were women's clubs. <laughs> anyway, you, after you get your clubs, you get balls and tees. Oh, um, the rest you go. The balls ain't that expensive. You get like fifty ball, balls for like twenty dollars. Okay, okay. You get the tees. You know things put in the ground. I got a bag of five hundred. Mm-hmm. You reuse the tee. Okay. If it don't break. Okay. I was breaking the shit out of mine. So, because I'm thinking you leave it there. I personally got wooden tees. I thought you, tees, I thought you break Chance is laughing at me. He was like, why you come out here with these? I'm like, well, it's, it's going to stay on the ground. He said, no, man, you pick it up and reuse it. I figured I'm being nice to the environment that I don't get no plastic got it. tea. Anyway, so after you do that, I went to a golf range not uh, far from us. It's like 20, that place was like $25 a person for 18 holes. You can put practice put on their green for free. Mm, nice. The driving range is free. You get a hundred balls for fourteen dollars. That's not a bad deal at all. Yeah, yeah no. this is this is bad deal. Spend a lot of money if you want to, but the game itself is not expensive. Mm. I guess I only think and about it. That twenty five dollars get you a golf cart. Mm. Oh, that is good. I wonder if they mean Kevin. You can no, that it definitely yeah. has the potential. Press soft. It definitely but, has the potential to be extremely expensive. Y'all I wonder, too, if, if it's lying. the cost to um, train your kid if they're younger, too. I think that might I be a factor. I imagine Lessons. Lessons are, yeah. Correct. I'm sure they're expensive. Get out they there and hit it. Things. You'll figure it out. If you want to be you there and be at the club sure. all day and all of that, you got to have the leisure time to do it. You leisure do. Time. No, no, no. For sure. That's, you know, but at the same I'm like. So when does this get it? Because I don't plan on doing much more than what I'm doing already. I, we want to get Kai trained in. I feel like Kai would love golf, even though he wants to play football, soccer, basketball. Shoes, think, golf shoes ain't that expensive? Yeah, but the more you're adding stuff is actually also what makes it expensive. Because yeah. typically basketball is go outside and f- find something to do, and then there's a basketball. Right, and then you figure it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but if you need... play the sport at a league. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. Like you sound so yeah, yeah. Okay. What's uh, your guilty pleasure? My guilty pleasure, uh, my indulgence this week is <laughs> last week after I got my hair done, there is a fat sows on, mm. uh, it leads out right before you get on the one on one. And uh, I should not have stopped because I needed to be traffic, but I did stop. Oh, no. And I got the Oreo, it's their salted caramel Oreo milkshake. Oh my God! Seventeen hundred calories. First of all, fat cells don't each one better than the next. It only needs to be thirty percent plus or minus. They fat cells don't never do nothing fast. They're mm. never in a rush. No, it ain't They're, fast cells. No, it's always seventy five people working, one person in the restaurant, <laughs> and it takes them thirty five minutes to do anything. Oh no! Every you time, milkshake. Bring that cow around. Yeah. <laughs> it, they're always Got one milkshake going. So slow. <laughs> bring old Lessie in here. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta it's it. terrible. I absolutely hate their service. I think they they just have the worst. Like they're just never in a rush. How and their food is not good. Don't go there for the food. It's just like food that you eat if you're like high or drunk in the middle of the night. Like it just is very, not good for with, you. With chicken with, fin- and chicken onion rings and, and mozzarella sticks on them. Right now it sounds phenomenal because I am hungry. I can't do it. Give me a mozzarella stick, a stick dipped in ice cream. Oh, bless it. Help it. Help <laughs> my the food baby. is coming. It's eight minutes away. It's so I know. I don't know where my Jamba juice went. Okay. Well, why would I let you do all that and it was mine? I was trying to help you. You put your fingers all on the top. Oh, now we don't do stuff. (laughs) 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 Oh, now we don't do stuff. Why you don't? I can't use my finger to open up the... Uh, No. You usually ask me to go ahead and lighten everything up. (laughs) No. Oh, my gosh. I was trying to help you so you could drink because you was hosting. Hey, guys, Prize Picks is the largest <laughs> daily fantasy sports DFS platform in North America. They are the easiest, most exciting way to play DFS. It's just like, you know, you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you pick more than or less than on two to six players stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. <laughs> Football season may be over, but the action on the floor is heating up. Whether it's tournament season or a fight for playoff home court, there's no shortage of high-stakes basketball moments this time of year. Get in on the excitement with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app, where you can turn your hoop knowledge into serious cash. 
You can now win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into 1000 with NBA, NHL, and college basketball entries today on prize picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Want to play alongside some of Prize Fix favorite players like Meek Mill and Sugar Sean O'Malley? You can find you can now find the community plays under the promos tab of the app to view entries from some of the biggest names in the Prize Fix community each week. Conference tournaments are here, which means that the biggest moments in college basketball are getting closer. Be a part of the action on Prize Fix for both men's and women's college basketball. Prospects even offers injury insurance so that your entries stay in play even if one of your players gets injured. For basketball games, if your player, if you have a player who exits the game in the first half and doesn't return until the second, or so excuse me, and does not return on the second, the player's projections won't count against you. And the rest of your entries stay live. That is so dope. Prospects now offers Apple Pay for quick and easy deposits into your account. This basketball season, you got quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and enormous selection of players and stat types, which makes Prize Picks the number one daily sports pick. Y'all know we love Prize Picks over here. You don't even got to listen. Let me tell y'all how fun and exciting some of the experiences are. So this week's on Prize Picks, I'm selecting. Stephen Curry for more than 29 <laughs> picks hey. and Nikola jo- Jokic, Jokic for more than 10 rebounds. I know him. Uh-huh. I do. I know. I know him and they know I know him. Or you know what? I could do Kevin Durant for more than 28 picks and Trey Young for more than 10 assists. <laughs> Y'all know, or Caitlin Clark for more than 30 points and LeBron James for more than seven assists. Download the app today and use code TBTB TBTB. for a first deposit match for up to $100. Again, download the app today and use code TBTB TBTB. for a first deposit match for up to $100. It's prospects. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. You know what else is easy? (laughs) Me and me undies. Okay? Love it. And I would love for Kevin to tell us more about me undies. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> the thing about being a guy is we're pretty much stuck with what we got, appearance wise. Male makeup, pff, what to go along with my powdered wig, a peck push up bra. What would the bros say? Meggings that accentuate this caboose? Dude, there's kids out here. Finally, Me Undies is unveiling their latest gifts to help men feel big, like a contoured pouch and ball caddy. That micromodal sling keeps things separated and lifted, high and lifted up. Nine out of ten women swear this sophisticated brief technology will make you look huge, and that's all that matters, right? Yeah, I, nine out of ten is fantastic. I only care about one. Mm-hmm. She saw that sausage and meatballs in, in the me under. She said, my goodness, in 20 years, that peen ain't ever been peening like it peened before. It's peening all out of this world. I said, this is the same peen, girl. Looks can be deceiving. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> once I get it up out of here, you're going to recognize it. <laughs> she said, well, a, a girl can dream, can she? Style from everyone, from all black classics to fun, <laughs> expressive prints. Me on these has a look for everyone. Plus, they come in sizes extra small to full XL because somebody's be body and body, yaddy, yaddy. Guaranteeing a flattering cut for everybody. Versatile loungewear, we got it. Unmatched comfort, you bet your rumple steel skin. Responsibly source, Earth. We love that planet. Problem free philosophy. Not happy with your first pair of me undies? It's on me undies. Good things come. In big packages at MeUndies to get 20% off your first order plus free shipping at MeUndies.com slash TBTB. TBTB. That's MeUndies.com slash TBTB for TBTB. 20% off plus free shipping. MeUndies, comfort from the outside in. TBTB for the balls, the balls. <laughs> I don't know what part of that this was uh, rogue and which part of that was Me MeUndies is a very because, loose ad read. Yes, because they're just as wild as you are. Mm-hmm. Mm. All right, moving right along. Okay, so yeah, that was my uh, guilty pleasure. So uh, anything that you, you could be something you watch, something you ate, something you put on, whatever it is that you just kind of overindulge. This Fantastic. next smegma- segment. Come on, smegma, I like it. Yeah. I'm calling it 40 Years of Hugs and Hindsight. One of the original 
premises of the show was we were watching uh, Married at First Sight because we're all married couples. Yes. And so we wanted to give our take on these people watching or, or these people getting married based on our um, experience. So I'm going to invite you all to send us questions, relationship questions, and then we will offer our advice. Okay, yes. so 40 years because between uh, relationship, dating, and marriage, there's 40 plus years here. Correct. But 40 years of hugs and hindsight had a better ring. Okay, here I we love go. The name. Thank y'all. This is my favorite part of this stuff is mm. what am I going to call it? It had jingles and stuff, which actually they weren't jingles. They were just See, forget Marcus, it. Anyways. Be, we, Marcus used to sing the jingles on it. It's going to cause an argument. And then once I got into it and loved it, he stopped. Um, wow. That's Come on. fun. 40 years of hugs and hindsight. Five, six. Five, six, seven, eight. My food is almost. You jackass! <laughs> I thought Close. I was about to say yeah, that too. He should be walking up any second. Now. Um, <laughs> if you're listening and you're a gin and juice listener, you may recognize these questions because I stole them because I needed a bouncing off party. Okay, I won't do it in the future. I just needed a point to bounce off of. So just send your questions in the future. But right now, you may have sent this to gin and juice. It's fine. It's so All right. The question is, how do I proceed when it comes to dating again? I'm going to be honest. Risa Tisa got me so paranoid on top of seeing things my ex have been posting subliminally, subliminally uh-huh. about our relationship as of recently. And she means uh, February. Mm-hmm. How do I start dating? How do I start again being cautious without being extremely paranoid and instantly accusatory? I hope this makes sense. Uh huh. What advice do I have? Our what advice do we want to give our listener here? Mm-hmm. I would see the part that we're missing is that I don't know the reason. What the not reason the purpose behind her dating is. If the purpose is, I just want to, you know, what they say about me, so my royal oats, or just be out here, then it would be just be safe and have fun. Mm -hmm. If the purpose is for, I would like to be in a longer committed relationship, I would say you got to do your due diligence. Uh, You got to not only fact check their background, you got to, like, start meeting people that are real. Yeah. Like, physically in the real reality. Because that's the biggest thing that I noticed about Risa Tisa is that it would have helped. apps and stuff. Well, not just that. She didn't meet any real people, touchable, tangible people. She eventually met his aunt that was actually mm-hmm. his mm-hmm. mother's friend. But, like, if you say you got siblings... I'm going to need to meet the siblings in the flesh. Right. And them start telling me more about you. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, I have kids and one of their heads or eyes might do something weird. It's like, is my, one of my kids going to come out with that <laughs> genetic head or eye? <coughs> also, you're going to have to show me pictures of your arena football oh, career. Yeah. Right. I'm going to need to see Highlight how good I need to see. <laughs> when Marcus told me he modeled. I got to see the video of him modeling in a strip club. <laughs> no. Uh, we going to no. find that thing. We ain't going to find that shit. Oh, it was great. I said, Marcus, is this a strip club? He said, huh. <laughs> we was in there for the hoes. We didn't care. Uh, Here's, this is one thing I'll say. A mistake, um, I feel like a mistake a lot of people make is asking people that have been married for a really long time about going back into the dating scene. Man, that's We real. don't know. It's a new game out here. Mm-hmm. It's a new game. We Angel didn't have can, internet. No, shut up. Let me finish. <laughs> Angie can act like she got all the advice in the world. She don't. I've we can talk advice. about when it comes to when you, once you're in the relationship that's what I'm saying. and you're looking toward, you know, hey, we've been together this amount of time. Was, we can get some insight on that. But as far as asking us about starting up dating, we don't know shit. Go ahead, kid. Oh, the person that asked the questions in the chat. She said, my end goal is to be happily married. I've met a lot of family and they aren't perceived to be like that. Uh, I would say this. She said, I don't want to be extremely paranoid, which I get. I think you just be slightly paranoid. Yeah. I don't think you should have no paranoia. Mm -hmm. Just a little pair. (laughs) You don't have to have mucho paranoia. Cautious. Cautiously optimistic. Mm -hmm. Melissa used to say uh, this. She worked in the aerospace industry. We both did, but she was a good employee. She, one of the things they would say is trust but verify. Mm-hmm. So if you say you worked in arena, re, re, uh, arena football, mm-hmm. okay, show me the highlight. Arena football mm-hmm. ain't that old. There should be something on YouTube. At least if ain't no video of you playing, then I should see you a picture or something like that. Uh, believe what they say. 
once you can verify what they say. Right. If they show you their bank account, click the phone. Yeah. Click back. Make sure you're not swipe to the left. Make sure it's not a picture. Um, I think starting off on the internet, I, I do actually agree with Marcus's point tremendously. The further we get away from the year our Lord and Savior 2000, the less we have to offer you on how mm-hmm. to date. The, I disagree. The whole dating arena has changed because of social media and dating apps. But what hasn't changed is verification. No. That hasn't. You should be able to validate some claims um, as you go on a relationship. I think Risa... Um, she didn't, she wasn't able to validate them claims. Yeah. And I think a lot of times your gut is more <clears throat> on, but you don't want something to be true. Yeah. yeah. So you make it untrue. Right. That's good. That's good. Because you want it to be what you want it to be. Right. You want to believe so bad that this is going to work out mm-hmm. that you make it work out. Right. And if you're going to do that, then you're going to be making, you can make excuses for anything. Right. Mm-hmm. If you want it to be the way it is. Right. Um, and I, I was just going to say real quick, my advice is not from how we dated. My advice, because I've had, I have a lot of single friends out here in these streets, mm-hmm. and I'm just noticing what they're going through, and I'm like, ah, note to self for other fee- people, mm-hmm. you can't just, especially if you're doing apps. And I also seem to, fe- it feels like there's a higher, if the if the goal is marriage, the higher rate of the match being good is when it's uh, someone referred to you by someone who knows you, like when there's a common connector. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I know people who've been married off of apps. But I've noticed that there's been a higher uh, a wedding rate or marriage rate when it's like, I got a girlfriend that I want you to meet that's yeah. really nice versus it being an app. Mm-hmm. Also, if your goal is marriage, right, I think that you should not start with I want to be married. Walk with me. Okay. I think you should just be like, First thing, first, do I enjoy this date? Mm-hmm. Does this person seem like a person I can be safe with? Uh-huh. Let those be the check marks off. Yeah. Because if they got to be husband or wife first, they got to get everything. Right. Mm-hmm. Don't even go into that yet. Do I feel comfortable with them? Do they feel trustworthy? Can I believe what they say? Because mm-hmm. those are marriage qualities. Right. But you need to check those boxes along the way as right. opposed to like, can I see myself with kids? How much money do you make? You'll go along. You you'll f- figure those things. A lot of way. dudes will. You know, I, can, I can speak because game don't change. Game yeah. not, not I, game I, I, don't change. You no, know, we got our single friends. They'll come to us. Yeah, this this and that. He said this. He does that. That nigga lying. <laughs> or he this he that. I'm telling you right now, this game. Because you tell a dude up top, you know, I'm looking to be married. I want to be married by this time. He gonna cater to how he acts one. to to make it look like what you want. And that's what I was gonna get to. That is the point. I if know they, that's why I said it. <laughs> if they know, and I think that's what Risa Tisa's uh, trap she fell into. Right. Mm-hmm. How much money do you make? Can we buy a house? If I know these are the the, the questions that you gonna want answered, and I got a I pre- can buy a house every week, <laughs> I can pre can those answers. But mm-hmm. if you're just like, you know, watching how somebody treats the wait mm-hmm. staff, how do they handle themselves when they get frustrated? These are revealing qualities of how they are going to act in a relationship. Not how much money do they have. That stuff can be fabricated. Uh, so, yeah, anyway. Hello? Yeah, that was good. Oh, you already gave advice to this one? What ads are we at? Where are we at? In the show? I got one more we're, ad. Go ahead. Yeah, we got one more. We're, we're about to head into the last segment. We, okay. Um, uh, we could do one more question, actually, and then we can do an ad. Did and we you can answer do. that question? On the, my, my, I think my advice is very similar to everyone. I, I am always uh, a little cautious about getting me uh, dating <coughs> advice just because Kevin and I did meet so young. However, I do also believe that there are foundational truths that, you know. Yeah. Um, but I, I, one of the things <coughs> Kev said that I think is worthy of, like, saying again is, especially as women, because we are like conditioned that marriage is like what we aspire to. I think it is so easy to find someone and fit them. And then you dream of this life Mm -hmm. that you picture and then they fit into it and you don't see the person for who they 
actually yes, are. That's you exactly see right. them for how it fits into the dream world that you've created. <laughs> yes. And I think that's how you ignore red flags or disregard red flags or excuse red flags. Because sometimes we see the red flags, mm -hmm. but you excuse them away for yes. whatever reason. And I think you do have to be like, um, you know, cautious about going into relationships. You can always have marriage as a goal, but it doesn't mean this person is the person you're going to marry. Yes. So you want to be able to be, you know, kind of differentiate which side of the coin are you I think are that's you a fantastic on. point. And I think especially as like uh Christians, sometimes we like shame people for dating. I think dating is one of the best things mm -hmm. you can do Absolutely. as a young person Absolutely. because you start recognizing who you are, personalities that work well with mm -hmm. you. Um, the type of woman that you are, how you, you respond. Yourself. You yeah. do have to learn yourself. So you don't show <laughs> up when people are asking you about you. You don't be lying right. and misrepresenting who you think you are. A lot of people be out here lying yes. about themselves. I have a friend who says they're such a giver and I want to be like, no, you're not. Right. right. You're not. Mm -hmm. You <laughs> are a taker. You take the take the take the right. take, take. Listen, the uh, people do not often have an accurate uh view of themselves right yeah yeah because you, you to protect yourself in your mind you're gonna cast the best version of yourself out to the world uh but it's actually how other people see you is how you probably are being interpreted mm -hmm. right right, right. let's say you uh at the beginning of a relationship you right. act like the person you want to be or something like mm -hmm. that oh yeah I never instead of the phrase. person that you are oh yes that oh, that's sense. good I that's your that they're your representative <laughs> yes I'm going to say something after we answer the next question. Okay, very good. In a relationship in which you, mm -hmm, let me read it again. All right. In a relationship in which you, the female, make more financially than your partner, how do you enter discussions about finances? The same way if I was the one making less. In, the, in our situation right now, this has not always been the situation. We flip-flop multiple times, just like you all have flip-flopped mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> we have always respected each other regardless of who was making what. And I think in a marriage now, in a, in a boyfriend, girlfriend situation, I'm not going to speak to that because mm -hmm. I wouldn't know why you would be in my finances like that anyways. But in a <clears throat> marriage, I, when I was the broker one, I didn't see my, I was as broke as he was. Right. Because this is our money right. <laughs> right here. So I made decisions that respected the fact that this is our money. I'm not about to be overspending. Mm -hmm. You're just making all this noise into the mic. <laughs> the pot calling the kettle black. Just talk. <laughs> no, you were. <laughs> just talk. Uh, I uh, was about to say, I wasn't out here overspending or anything like that. And now that we have a little bit um, more money. We indulge in certain things, but not overindulge. Mm -hmm. I'm not out here being like, I'm about to f drop 50 grand on something random. Mm -hmm. Like, that's just not going to happen. But I also, just because I'm the one making, currently bringing in more revenue, I'm not going to be like, well, you need to sit on your hands because you didn't, you personally weren't the person that went on set to do such and such. No, this is our money and we respect the fact that we have bills together, we have children to raise, mm -hmm. but we also are blessed to have some abundance where there are certain things like him doing golf is something. Me keeping my nails and my toes done <clears throat> and my hair done whenever I want to get it done is something that I'm going to be able to do because, you know, we have the money to do it. But that's... Yeah, that's that's, um, that's a, a common misconception. People out here in these internet streets and these social media streets and they thinking... You got to be able to do this, that, and the third. Like, people forget about the building process. Mm -hmm. I literally had a conversation this past week. It's a guy, he has older sons, and they both both got girlfriends, and, you know, they're waiting. He was like, you know, he asked his sons, like, why ain't y'all getting married? Like, y'all been together for an extended amount of time, many, many years. And his son told him, uh, one of his sons told him that he's uh, he ain't got nothing to offer yet. You know, I got to have my stuff together. I had to get together to offer that. I'm looking at him, and he's married. He met his wife young, and they built together. I was, he was like, yes. Yeah. So I told him, you know what, that's notable. And I looked at him. I said, any man can give any woman everything. What happened to building? Mm. What I you mean, like, any man? A man can give any woman in the world anything, everything. It's easy to give a woman everything, but somebody you can build with? How do you give her everything? How's that easy? 
when it said when he said that his son he's like waiting to build he he's, he ain't got nothing to offer. Like this he's got, already got a career, he's got a job. You had this girlfriend for I don't know 5 6 years. What else do you what else do you want to bring to the table other than you can build with me versus I got to have everything before I get married. Okay. I wasn't fully understanding, but okay. You never do this. I got it. Um, <laughs> yeah. By the time I got it all, I can hand it to anybody. But who right. you want to be? Yeah. Who you want to be shooting in the gym with? Yeah, okay. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of men say that. One one thing that's I want. That's the biggest excuse. Dang. I think that's mind. the burden that men bear, right? Yeah. I think yeah, for do. men, yeah. the burden is like that, that financial responsibility and not for nothing. Mm. I don't think that a lot of women want to be with no man that's going to be. Uh, broke. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it's it's different depending on the age. <laughs> she said, uh, broke. It's a lot different depending on the age because if she broke, why the hell is she looking for a rich dude? Yeah. Oh, Yo ass that's but exactly I don't think that, what they do. Yeah, but I was going to say, <laughs> I don't think the responsibility to be, sorry, we do got to show the review, I promise you, but uh, we're not going to have that much time left. Sorry. We can also review it next week. That's true. Yeah. Uh, you, you built a whole another podcast. I'm sorry. I was trying to make sure we had <laughs> enough stuff. Great. It's great. Yeah, I was like, this is great. But we yeah. Well, next yeah. time I'll flip flop it then. I'll do the saying, recap up yeah. top. And they're saying also depends on the age. Now, yeah. you ain't going to be out here in your 40s looking for somebody that. Here's you know what, what I want. You growing. just remind me of what I, my thought just came back. I'm going to tell you what I think it is from the outside looking in because I watch a lot of dating people talk. You need to, and this is the money situation as well. I think this all falls into this. And y'all tell me if I'm wrong. I think a lot of times people don't date someone with the same view of the world as them. Mm-hmm. A basketball wife and a basketball player who wants a basketball wife and a basketball wife who wants a basketball player, they understand the rules of their game. Okay. Right? If you're not a basketball player, but you're trying to get a basketball wife, you don't have that type of money. They're not going to fit your lifestyle. I think they I understand. They have a separate set of rules that applied, and there was a girl who went viral uh, a couple weeks ago. She was like, the dude asked her for some money for lunch. And she, she, he sent $30, and she said that wasn't enough. Some, this girl on TikTok said, that's a drug-dealing girl. Oh, got She's it. expecting more. You need a working girl whose lunch actually is $30. Right. But you're dating a different girl, and I'm not even saying women are gold diggers. I'm saying Melissa and I are people who believe the money goes into the pot. Mm-hmm. So when Melissa was making more money than me for the majority of our marriage, her, she put more money into the pot, but we split the pot. Now that I generate a lot of money, we still have the same viewpoint of the pot. There's people who believe <laughs> my money is your money. And when we go on vacation, I pay my half, your half. Date those people who agree with that mm-hmm. ideology instead of trying to make a pot person be a split I person understand. or a split person be a pot person. But you know what? I feel like social media and society, we're starting to create these monsters, meaning we are creating dudes who have basketball player mentality but are not basketball That's players. what I'm saying. Right. And we have women who have – so, like, for you all, you all – your mentalities and everything matched up to what you were actually willing to do. Right. Yes. Where then you have these women who want basketball type dudes, but not are willing to be the basketball type of chick. They're not willing to stop eating, go to DR, get yeah. your body yeah. built to mm-hmm. a certain way and be in the cut and understand that you will not be the only one. Well, it, it, just like in the crown, uh, I didn't know this until the crown. I actually didn't watch it. Somebody talked about this on, on uh, Twitter. I think you might have got this far. They're like, Kate Middleton don't bump into Prince William. Oh, for She's sure. groomed to date that type of person, and yeah, she yeah. comes from that circle of people. It, even in the church, if you want to be a first lady, you need to date a person that's on track to be a pastor. Mm-hmm. Same thing with sports. My, my godmother, who is a... Her husband was a professional uh, baseball player. He then was a coach for the L.A. Dodgers. He's still coaching professional baseball. She said, these women that end up with these athletes, this is not by accident. They are where they are. They go to where those men are and and position themselves to (laughs) run into these men. She was like, you can't get in the game if you ain't willing to go to where the game is. That's all I'm saying. Prime example. You remember we was on book tour. Mm-hmm. We were sitting in that hotel lobby eating. Yep. Oh, yeah. Them and, uh, <laughs> when ran- that baseball randomly, team was in there. Randomly, all these women came out of nowhere. We was like, wow. what just happened? And then 10 minutes later, the baseball team comes down. This, mm-hmm. They know. They what know the what the team, they know what team's in town. Yeah. Yeah. And they know what uh, hotel them teams mm-hmm. stay at. 
So they go to work. Them babies, we, we was like, what? Whole bunch of women and a yeah, yeah, yeah. whole bunch of click clacking came down yeah. to the lobby. And the next thing you know, the, ba- the baseball players come down to, and listen, the other part of the gold digging game, a lot of men want a trophy wife. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. They want somebody they can put on their arm. That's well, I'm then saying. you got to bring the bread to the table. But you, to Angel's point, you want a trophy wife, but you don't have trophy money. Exactly. You got to have a lot of disposable income mm-hmm. and yes. be willing to. To flaunt it, you should go to my be able to go to Miami, get that car, get that hotel, mm-hmm. or stay away from them women. Yeah, you want a good a, woman yeah. to raise a family with, yeah. then she gonna be working a, a job that women raise families with. But I, I think say, people go ahead. No, I was going to say, and if you want to be that trophy wife, you got to understand you might be in a case with a bunch of other trophies. Yeah, hello, that's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> that's the truth. The way Melissa's eyes got big, monogamy is <laughs> not a highly respected <laughs> thing bad. in those circles. Mm-hmm. To Angel's point, it's accepted. That on the road, when they on the road, you them dog on women clicking, clacking down to that uh, lobby. Yes. Now, what were you about to say? I was going to say, I think we are having um, the Internet sometimes have conversations above pay grades. Oh, no, absolutely. You mixing all these conversations. Yeah, with all these it's, people. we're mixing a conversation about basketball wives and, you know, a basketball player husband type. And the reality is, for the most part, we are all just regular folk. Yeah. And I think for us regular folk, I think the conversation needs to be we got to bring that down yeah. and talk about the morals and the values yeah. about yeah. how we see <laughs> like what's your money story? That's yeah. all I really want to know. Yeah, we'll Do you have the same view of a dollar that I have? That's right. I yeah. Who was the dude that everybody was clowning because he spent like 500000 on a date with some random uh, I can't remember the start. It was like last year, yeah, the year before. I can't. I remember. I can't think of he was, He's in the NBA, and everybody's like, "Oh, he tricking off all that money. He got that money. Listen, he can spend five hundred thousand in a night. We should do the ad though. I, we, I'm uh, gonna get it. Okay. Yeah, we gonna end I'm this gonna soon say. enough. It's fine. It's <laughs> 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 already canceled. Just calm down. <laughs> I had the opportunity to be a basketball girlfriend. I hmm. went to the University of Kentucky. I knew then I'm not That's built it. for this. You're right, right, right. Because guess what? You might just want to F, but then we married in my head. You're mine. I'm going to stalk you. <laughs> you need to take care of your son that I let you impregnate me with. I'm not going to be able to be Hilarious. that girl that's Same. quiet. Same. That, um, that does not embarrass you, that does not show up to the games loud, that does not have to have her, your name tattooed on her. I'm going to be that chick. And that's when I knew, you know what? You're going to tutor these men, and then you're going to get up out of here because you're going to look stupid. And I was tutoring them because life doesn't happen biweekly. Huh? So why should payday? The money you can earn can be in your hands today with Earning. Earning is an app that gives you access to your pay as you work up to hundred dollars per day or up to seven hundred and fifty dollars per pay period. Just download the Earning app and verify your paycheck. Then access up to a hundred dollars a day as you work and leave an optional tip. Any money you access plus tips are automatically repaid from your next paycheck. Now here's some reasons why earning could be a blessing in your life. Say for instance, your car gets hit by the sanitation truck and it almost rips off the bumper of your car. It happens to me almost every week. It, it happened, happened to us last week. See? See how common it is? <laughs> <laughs> if it happens to you, guess what can help you earn it? Because you weren't expecting that daggone bumper to get ripped off. Or say, for instance, your little fur baby gets sick. And when these fur babies get sick, you got to take them to the vet. You can't just sit there and pray over them and put holy oil on them. You got to take them in. That's something that you weren't expecting. Earning can help you with that. Or maybe you have an, uh, for real, an unexpected trip that you have to take. Earn it, earn it, earn it. Make earning a part of your financial routine and join earnings over three and a half million customers who say things like, when I think of earning, I think of financial stability, security. It gives me peace of mind. Download Earnin today, spelled E-A-R-N-I-N, in the Google Play or Apple App Store. When you download the Earnin app, type in beautiful, Be- beautiful, beautiful, under podcast. When you sign up, it'll really help the show. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. under podcast. <clears throat> Subject to your available earnings, location, daily max, and pay period and max. See earnin.com or slash TOS for details. Earnin is a financial technology company, not a bank. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank and Trust, member FDIC. Very good. <clears throat> um... Wait, so y'all want to finish this whole thought? Did, did we interrupt? Well, I don't yeah. think there's a point. Well, there. you know what? Well, we still have 15 minutes. I thought that would be enough time to do this. I did it. Full section, 15, 15, 15, 15. No, this, 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 this deserves more than 15. Oh, y'all want more than 15. Yeah, we get more for, but you know what? Something I was going to say before, because if we could take up the 15. Okay. 
Um, is what I'm learning in my big fours is that the way I think when I was younger, I thought that I was hearing the voice of God in a very like booming way. And that's actually not what it was. Mm -hmm. I feel like the Holy Spirit actually talks to me through my intuition. And I don't think that I was taught to tap into that as a uh, younger person. But now more than ever, being in my big fours, I am learning to listen and trust my gut. Mm -hmm. And it has not only not led me wrong in a lot of ways, it has preemptively told me something was getting ready to happen Mm -hmm. that was happening. And I think in dating, that would save, to back to the original question, in dating, it would save a lot of women a lot of these Risa Tisa stories. Not to say this, I will say this, Legion was a deceptive snake in a garden. So I'm not saying you still won't get deceived, but I think if we are able to get our head out of the clouds for a couple of seconds and silence our heart a little bit and just really tap into what our intuition is telling us, we will start seeing some red flags a lot sooner right if mm-hmm. that makes sense and i'm not just talking agree. about in relationships i've noticed my intuition has been a lot more right about my children i've noticed my intuition has been a lot uh right more right about business things and i'm realizing that ain't me that's the lord um so that's what i was gonna say uh before i think we don't allow ourselves to really quiet ourselves and see how our gut is actually moving us because we want to lead with everything else. It says lean not to your own understanding in the Bible. It's so that we get heady sometimes. Mm-hmm. And our emotions are fickle. So one minute we're like, oh my God, I love him. Mm-hmm. He's the best. But bump all that. He he took you to uh, Joey's with an ass. With an ass. <laughs> one thing nothing. you said that I, I agree with. Jade Nova has a new album called Where Have I Been? And it's like a story through song. And... I'm going to get to the point for real quick and I'm going to tell you what she said, and how it applies to life. One thing I to to the point of intuition, I think a lot of time people don't identify how they were raised and that trauma or pleasure, whatever it is, uh-huh. and how that manifests itself in dating. Mm-hmm. So in the story that in the album, her dad doesn't say I love you a lot. Mm-hmm. And she's like, you know, you say I love you. And he's like, all right, Jay, go, go, go play. He's like, do you think my dress is pretty? He's like, girl, come on. Just like he's not affirming her that way. So there's this dude who's just trying to get to the draws. And he's like, come on, girl, let's go to Lookout Mountain, basically. She's like, oh, I don't know. I'm trying to take it slow. And she's like, girl, but I love you. And she's like, you mm-hmm. love me? Mm-hmm. She's like, yeah, I love you. So she's like, okay, well, let's go. She's like, what do you think about my dress? He's like, yeah, hell yeah, that dress looks good. So what she was looking for in her dad, sure. she yeah, got in somebody. that man. And I think because we, obviously, in the whole point of the story, she didn't identify that. But I think that happens a lot in our lives because we're not, we don't know why we do. And this is something I learned in therapy a lot. We don't know why we do what we do. Mm-hmm. And it manifests itself in so many different ways. What's wrong? My phone is going off. Uh, it manifests <laughs> itself in so many different ways that we can't even stop because we haven't, haven't identified the source. Right. And mm-hmm. the symptoms come out in business. Uh, and you. it's not just in romantic relationships. A lot of times it comes out in every relationship yeah, yeah, yeah. you have. Um, but if you don't know that, you won't know that. And you'll be like, why do I keep attracting the same men, the same women? Why do I keep ending up in the same situation? You move from Atlanta to Wichita and you don't found the exact same person that you were trying to avoid. Well, because you done took yourself there. Right. And you keep looking out, you keep attracting the same thing because you're not changing who you are and how you approach the world. So... Yeah. That's good, Kevin. It was Thank very you, good. I just realized if that was a dairy shake, I'm going to have a six-pack by the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, it didn't say on the menu. Does it say right? Doesn't say I'm it sorry. on the menu. Go ahead. No. The <laughs> other thing I was going to say is I think the conversation about women. Okay, let's put a little meat on the bone in this scenario. Come on, put okay? it on there. In a relationship in which you, a female, makes more money financially than your partner, how do you enter discussions? Okay, so let's make some assumptions here because it's not in here. Let's assume they're married. Okay, All let's right? do it. And let's assume they've been married for a while. And for a while, I'm going to say seven plus years. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's also assume mm-hmm. she's made more money consistently over the course of their relationship because... Mm-hmm. 
uh, the sometimes more like, and let's assume it's more, more, not like five to $7,000 more, because mm -hmm. that could also just be like a raise, which means you probably could be going back, back and, and forth. forth a lot. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Cause me and Kev did that too. Yeah. When we were both working, I'm making 30, he's making 32. I got a raise now I'm at 33. You know, you just kind of yeah. go back and You're forth. You're talking about like a career gap. Yes, like exactly. We're talking about yeah. career gap differences, right? Okay. All right. So with that said, the conversation about and maybe this is for Kevin and Marcus to interject the conversation where women have to coddle the ego of men into conversations is sometimes very unfair mm -hmm. like men don't enter a relationship making more and think we have to have a conversation about money. Let me make sure I'm Correct. very, Correct. you know, fragile in my words Correct. and how I say this and how mm -hmm. I say that. Most of the time it's going to be, woman, we need to be on a budget. Mm -hmm. All right. So here's the spreadsheet. The spreadsheet. This is how much money you will have. Women have to go in like, okay, so listen, you know, I love you, right? <laughs> so what I've been noticing yeah. is I know I make more money, but what I want you to know, it don't really, you gotta the yes, you got to stroke the yeah. ego. And so it becomes, this like very like walking on glass type situation. And I don't know how best, because we've never like, you guys have never gone through that where I feel like I have to walk on glass mm -hmm. in order to have approached this conversation. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So how do you, what advice would you give the woman or what advice? No, no, no. Don't give advice to the woman. No, what advice would you give the man to be prepared for this conversation? Um, go ahead. I'll, I'll go. So one thing I always said before meeting Angel, while dating Angel, I always said I always want a woman to make equal to or more than me mm -hmm. because I'm attracted to intelligence. Therefore, mm -hmm. intelligence most times will bring in more income. Yeah. Um, I was comfortable in my career. I was an electrician at the time. I was like, I'm on, I know I'm going to do well wherever I go eventually, even right. if I don't start off that way. Um, but for men, this is, this is one thing that I discovered in therapy since Kevin will talk about therapy. Shut up. <laughs> uh, nah, this is one thing I discovered is a lot of men equate their income to their worth and they shouldn't. Right. Mm -hmm. Because you bring more than just a financial, uh, a providing financially. You, mm -hmm. you bring comfort. You bring safety. You bring a good conversation. You bring all the, all these different things. Yeah. So a lot of men, uh, and a lot of that, when they equate, because it's, it's hardwired in us. Yep. Like, we, we got to be able to do this. Got to bring, I got to be able to provide before I get married. I can't yep. just go in and take care. You know, if I can't, I can't take care of myself, which I get. It makes perfect sense because we're natural providers. But it doesn't mean it has to be a financial providing. It, does, yep. it doesn't have to be a monetary, mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, what's the word? Provision. provision. I thought I was about to say provision. I said that ain't right. Trust yourself. Um, yeah, you got to trust. Yeah, shut up, Kev. You <laughs> about to steer me off. Get out of here. Um, <laughs> Angel was saying trust yourself, too. Yeah, no. no. <laughs> but no, I would say I would say they got to get out of the head and let that ego, let the ego go of, you, you can't be, that's, that's a, that's an aspect in a marriage that you can't have insecurity around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A woman, like, that's very archaic. That's so old school. Woman, you can't make more than me. Like, any man that has that concept should remove man from his title because, that, like, you know, I'm a real man. She can't make more than me. Then you're not a real man if you can't handle that type of pressure. Yes. For there shouldn't sure. be pressure. Pressure. For sure. That's the name of the show. Yes. There shouldn't <laughs> be pressure. I can't, um, I don't know if I said it on here or not. Our goal is to cross the finish line. It don't matter who crossed first. Like we on the same team. If you right. cross first, good. Mm -hmm. Cheer me on while I run up there. Yep. Mm -hmm. Don't, oh, well, yeah, no, babe, slow down. <laughs> slow down. You're going to cross before me. No, cross that goddamn finish line. Like, so, for, yeah, for me, and my biggest advice would be let go of the ego. Yeah. Kevin. That's good. I'm trying so hard not to interrupt. Oh. It's very hard when I want to talk. That was good. <laughs> that talk, was great. Talk, talk, I think talk. Marcus hit so many amazing points. I just want to add to what you said, Tank, because you was you was hitting on them points. Men, a lot of times, I'll be You got a bug? It was a little bug, it flew. We uh a lot I don't even gonna say we because this ain't my <laughs> this ain't my lot in life, but I, I see this on social media, I should say. Men choose their women and how they approach themselves in relationship for the approval of other men more than mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the approval of that woman. Mm -hmm. They want to be able to, That's this, a good one, this is my wife, this is how I talk to her, she don't talk to me like mm -hmm. that, she make my plate, stuff that don't even really matter. Like the plate argument, I bring this up because it's always up on social media. Mm -hmm. My relationship 
a plate ain't even a thing I thought about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just hungry. <laughs> and my whole life, my mom, we, and I grew up in a place, the food is available, go and get you something to eat. I don't have to have my wife bring it to me to feel better. I just don't want to be hungry no more. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times men want the approval of men more than they want a true partnership with the woman that they are with. Right. So it, it prevents you from pleasure. And if he, she do that, I'm gay. Who's deciding what, what heterosexual <laughs> acts between a man and a woman are gay? Who's even thinking about that? Who would even know that? Right. You are so worried about what other men think. You can't even enjoy what you enjoy. Because, well, man, might think I'm gay. What is you worried about other another for yeah. while you having sex? Right. <laughs> like, what, why is that even in your mind? What, but what oh, will okay. men think? <laughs> Be doggone ruining men. And yeah. it, they don't even have to say it. Just the potential that mm. they might be able to say it. Kiki Palmer's whole situation with Usher is because what men might have said. If that was my baby mama. Mm. The world know that's Usher. He is an that's exclusionary his person. Yeah. That's a brand. A man <laughs> yes. who is comfortable with himself and his relationship with his wife, girlfriend, baby mom. She can, and this is, listen, I, don't, I think. Although I'm going to just stop you right there. If if it was Janet Jackson on that stage that you showed me from in the 2020s. Well, Janet was different. Uh, okay. Janet just, was making a bus in I their said, face. Oh, it's all brand, brand. Said, don't no, get mad no, no. at Usher. And then let it be Janet. I'm going to have attitude. That's <laughs> that's what they had that discussion on. I don't Absolutely know what we not. talked about. Oh, on we're the, talking, here's the thing. thing. I yeah. said I would love Janet Parker. Jackson is not Usher. She That died a little bit. <laughs> uh, but what I was going to say is men want to be with bad women, but don't want them to be bad. Mm. Mm. Well, that if she is attracted to you, then why you want to go and put right. sackcloth and ashes on her yeah. when she had a fat butt? Then let her have a fat yeah, butt. She out there fine that you don't want to leave the house. Now you don't. Now you can't. No, why, why? Who you try to look good for? I look this good when you met me. Yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> but you're not comfortable enough to let her. I be seeing so much on, especially on Twitter. Would you let your baby mom go out? If my wife Melissa's accents are her her stomach, her back, her legs, go be as fine as you want to be. Because at the end of the day, we share the same address. The, I want people to be like, ooh, she sure was fine. Sure was. I and she going to do this to my garage. <laughs> he said, <laughs> I don't actually have a problem with him feeling some type of way about Kiki mm -hmm. and Usher's thing. Because that you might be someone that does not enjoy seeing someone else put their hands on your significant mm -hmm. other in any type of sexual way. And that does not seem unreasonable. But where I call bullshit is when you want to call it out. On social media. Publicly. That is a conversation that, that you have in private. Because that's where other men were. That, no, right. that's what I I'm, totally agree with you. Yeah. It was potent. We would not have even thought. Of, the majority of us know Usher. We, he, that clip has went viral with a different woman a Every million night of times the show. through the Vegas thing. Yes. Issa Rae's married. Uh, all Keys. these famous women are married. Right. Like, if you. Now, nah, why are you out here? Which you, you got let the yeah. ride on you. That was my bad. I got carried away. Yeah. It was Usher. Done. Yeah. Wouldn't even have been a big deal. And I'm not saying that he did that, but it was other men like, and you, you would let your, first of all, Usher's not dancing with y'all because y'all ain't Kiki Palmer. And y'all ain't no Kiki out Palmer. Another famous, famous person. He's not <laughs> dancing with, with He's Latrice. He's certainly already getting a list of who's people, in the audience. Famous actresses and actors are already living in a paradigm that we're not used to because they be kissing on screen. They have, uh, right. Yes. Right, right. they have, he dances with Alicia Keys in the part, Super Bowl. They're both this is married. Part of his set. He like, no, is his at wife, work. His wife, literally Usher's wife, watches him perform. Because he's at work. God bless him. Man. <laughs> Usher is selling sex. He's been she selling likes. sex since he was 14. Yeah, she sure she's is. Just tapping her hands. She sure like, she's like, that's right. You know, babe. Yeah. She's like, you put the baby in me, though. Yes. Because, mm -hmm. because I, and I actually, I do agree. There is a such thing, at least I believe, we talked about it in the book and we're almost done. We are. Uh, I do believe there's such thing as healthy jealousy, right? So if your spouse is up there grinding, whatever, and you do feel a little bit of jealousy, I, I would, I would expect that. Mm -hmm. I think that is normal. That is common. In fact, I would appreciate if you did. Yes, please. Je <laughs> God is jealous of me. Husband, please also mm -hmm. be jealous mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. I understand that. But calling that on social media you're doing too much. Yeah, because then yeah. it's not about, it's really not about how you feel. It's about you trying to right. make, to embarrass her the way you felt exactly. embarrassed. Bingo. It's not exactly. exactly about how you feel. Bingo. And then, and then you're going to lose that fight because she's a more famous person. Right. Bingo. And that's just, that's just an example where, uh, and then somebody said this in the Patreon comments, and I agree with this. A lot of times men view women as property. The early marriage 
of in our society, back to the Bible, women were property. And that yeah. right. washed off of us. That 1940s, 50s, 50s that yeah. a period that people um, love so much, it was like that because women couldn't make nothing. So they can't make more than you if they can't get right. a job. Right. They can't vote. They can't right. have a credit card to like the six, the seventies or something like that. Right. This is relatively recent. And a lot of times want Don Draper's life. Don't make Don Draper's money. <laughs> you a mad man because yeah. you don't even do, you don't even hold your part of that bargain. How are you going to expect her to hold hers of this right. fictional world? You don't even have enough money to... He had a house in New York, a house in the suburbs, a car, and made enough that she didn't have to work. Do you do that in America? All right, then. If she got to go to work and cook, then let's change the whole rules. Yeah. The whole dynamic. Yeah. I just, you know... I got to pee. Okay, we're we done. Then. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. That's all. All right, very good. Let us know what you guys feel about the segments next week. Uh the last segment is called TBTB Reviews. And so we'll actually review. Um it's called Pressure on Tubi. The entire season uh-huh. is three episodes. It was also shot. Please watch it. In y'all. three days. Y'all please watch it. It's watch so good. It. I, I so want y'all wish, to be able to laugh I with so us. I wish we record we talked about that just so we can get it over with. No, we'll do it next week. So time. we'll so start good. with TBTB reviews next Lord, week and then we'll, we'll, we'll do the other side. With us. <laughs> yeah, 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 because you will, you won't know the what's pressure. going on until midway through the season. And you Don't still tell them nothing else. You still won't know. You still won't Watch know. Watch it with fresh eyes, When y'all. you all were like, oh, I didn't know what was going on until nah, the end. got like, confused. The whole time. They like going oh, yeah. to watch it after we talk about it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. If you haven't seen it by the time we talk about it, you will absolutely go and watch it. But you should, because you should. And I, because I want y'all to tell us what we forgot. Because by the time yeah. we watch it next week, we're going to yeah, forget something. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm not watching it. It's not the Dirty D It's the Dirty D reality show. It's Dirty D reality show. With Dirty D characters coming back. It's the best. So did I. I thought it was a scripted reality show. Oh, yeah, it could have been. All right, you guys, thank you. Bye. Bye.